love me, yeah, they love me. First love yourself. For that. And God we trust, trust me. I don't trust myself. Your jewelry, I get it took. No show. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Florida, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. They'll also match your first deposit up to $100, and you get a special pick when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Killer, what's good, man? Shit, what's good, bro? How are you? You all right? I'm chilling, man. That's what's up. And today, we are joined with our analyst, Maurice Claret. Mo, what's good, Mo? Mo, how you doing, man? Everything, what's going on? Good to see you, man. Everything. Looking good. Yes, sir. What shirt Likewise. is that, Mo? That ain't no shirt of ours. Oh, Got title it. town, baby, the Husky. <laughs> 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 yeah. Let you starting early. Yeah, you ain't <laughs> from Connecticut, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is tournament time, though. This is tournament time. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah we're defending champs. Somebody knows what's going on in the sport world. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I, I love, I love, I love you, Corn. I'm a lifetime fan, but that it's a guy out there in Syracuse that's looking crazy now. Don't forget that. Listen to me. We you, we will see. The only team I can see who got a chance to even compete. Now I know they lost a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. The only team I see right now is Houston. Houston. That's it. Okay. You know who I'm talking about, though, right? Yeah, that's the, uh, the, the freshman guard that put me on a few weeks ago. Pause. Yeah, he be in threes from everywhere. Meanwhile, this thing got an Oregon shirt on. I wasn't going to say it. Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> it was a color thing, Cam. Yeah, 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 you know? Wow, I'm, 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 man. I'm just saying. <laughs> Oregon shirt telling you about Syracuse. <laughs> I was going to wear my Nick shirt. <laughs> Nick, you would have said something about that. I had a, a real good Nick shirt. Uh-oh. You, you from New York sometime. <laughs> right. We're in Nick's shirt. So. Yeah. Okay, so let's start. So it was time for him to whip it out is Darvin Ham's quote of the day after LeBron's amazing fourth quarter finish versus the Clippers. So what do you guys think about what Darvin Ham had to say? And then how do you guys feel about LeBron's performance? Maurice, we'll let you go first. Well, like everybody else, Everybody sent me that uh that message um in my direct message, but uh you could tell the influence from the show that everybody was like, yo, this is crazy. And I said I agree. Yeah. Uh but but big shout out to um LeBron and his uh the fourth quarter performance. Uh when I looked at the LeBron playing, I'm like, man, it's it's crazy to believe that he's in uncharted territory. You know, somebody who's just he's doing stuff I ain't never seen before. Um you know, I, I'm pretty sure the whole world feels that way. And when I was preparing for this um, uh, this topic, I was saying to myself, like, man, at what point does he start to, I don't know, play so great or play for so long that the comparison stop between him and Jordan? And then it just becomes like you just appreciating somebody for doing something that nobody's ever done before. And I don't know. I just I, just, I wanted to basically throw it out there and see how y'all felt about it. I see you said my name because you know I had something to say, right? <laughs> <laughs> you said um, he's doing something that's never been done. What is he? What is he doing that's never been done? You know, to to play twenty years at this level, right? When I watched the highlight um, of him basically scoring, what is it, twenty one points in the fourth quarter? Like you've never seen nobody at thirty nine. I remember when Kobe. He had came back for that last year, like the last, I guess, his farewell tour those last few years. Like, it just felt like he was holding on and the Lakers wasn't good. And it just felt like he was watching something um, like you just you wasn't watching something at the, at, at what, at the level of what you've been used to seeing that. Right. And now that the game has changed and you're watching LeBron have these moments of dominance, you really see the league is, isn't as competitive defensively as it was before. And you start to begin to say to yourself, like, my man could probably do this for like two or three years, contribute how he's contributing. And like that, that's what I'm talking about. Somebody to dominate this long from start to finish from, you know, 18 when he came into the league all the way until he damn near 40. 
Like it's just like it's crazy. That's what I'm saying. What do you what do you think about um I, I, let me start by giving him his props. He did. It was an amazing game. Even what he did in the fourth quarter was also amazing when he hit the three. But then as I'm watching the three, and I'm really not a LeBron hater, but as as I'm watching him hit the three, I recognize Paul George is not playing. So I don't know how much of this I could really give credit to if the main guy at his position is not there. Well, I don't know. They're all professionals. You know, he, he doesn't decide who lines up across from him. You know, it's just to, to I, I, I think, like, if you want to go score 21 points at the YMCA, I think it's impressive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But to do it at the professional level, uh, I just like, I just like say to myself, like, I don't know. I, I, not that I grew up, but we came up around the same time in, in, in high school sports, right? And with everything that's happened with me after I got done playing, you look at all his peers, everybody's done playing. And for him to still be going out there, with the enthusiasm and the focus and everything he has right now, I just asked myself, I was like, man, like, you know, like how far can he continue to take this thing? And at what point does the conversation stop with like, like, I, I guess, I guess what I'm saying is that like the dominant conversation is always him being compared to Jordan. And I'll be saying like, is there another story or something else to be said about him that isn't just always comparing uh, LeBron to Michael Jordan or talking about what he isn't. And I said, like, is there something else that we're missing since he's been playing this long and doing something that people haven't seen done? That's what I'm saying. Okay. You want me to ask, ask you the other story? Because there is another story. It's just a matter of if we want to cover that story. What is it? <laughs> 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 the Balco story, allegedly. That's the story <laughs> that, that we're not addressing. I think it's crazy that if that was, if somebody else's name was allegedly in that, everybody would be covering it. I think is, I think is really, really a disservice to sports that we don't um, look into that and and kind of try to share what we believe about that. If if it comes out, not that it's true, but if it comes out that he was using enhancements, then how do we perceive all of this that we're talking about? Uh, good question. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess part of, part of my brain don't want to believe it's true if it did come out, so I just don't know. Yeah, I'm not saying it's true. I'm saying that is a thriving story that's out there. And I think I think it was um, Jason Whitlock and a few other people that said, why is nobody talking about this? And I really I really thought about that as well. But I don't have enough information to go into it. But I, I definitely am going to look into it. As a basketball purist. Mace gets his Mace gets his sports <laughs> information from Jason Whitlock. <laughs> that's who he goes to for his source for sports information. Him and Charleston White. That's who Mace is getting stories on sports from. Is Jason Whitlock. Whatever. Until that story come out, I don't even want to hear about. It. I'm not getting my information from Jason. Yo, Kevin Whitlock. Garnett said it as well. Kevin Garnett been hanging on LeBron this whole week. He usually show LeBron love. But but he 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 been I don't know what's going on this week with him and LeBron. He mad at LeBron about the dunk contest. I'm mad at LeBron about that too, because it, it, we you know what we said that story before everybody. Yeah. And then ever since then we've been talking about the dunk contest. No <laughs> no disrespect to KG, that's my bro. But I see it on several shows. Oh, LeBron ain't getting the dunk contest, and that's who fucked the dunk contest up. And I'm like, we said that shit before everybody. But I don't expect <laughs> I don't expect nothing different. As far as last night, um. Or the night before last, pardon me. It was a sensational performance. LeBron actually outscored the Clippers by himself. He had five threes in the fourth quarter. I was watching the game, actually. And I was like, yo, like you said, uh, Mo, I've never seen it. You know, maybe may seen it because he keeps talking about what we've never seen. 39-year-old <laughs> outscored a whole team in the fourth quarter hitting five threes. And not only that, they was being double. He was being double teamed. Now, when it was five minutes left in the court in the in the game, every time he got over half court, he was being double teamed. Mace was talking about Paul George wasn't playing. I get Paul George wasn't playing as far mm -hmm. as points is concerned, but he's not a better defensive player than Kawhi. Kawhi's the claw. Ain't he supposed to be the claw? 
Yeah. He's the claw. Yeah. And, and Kawhi, You're right about that. And Kawhi was guarding him the whole fourth quarter. He was fighting through picks, making sure he stayed on, and he couldn't do nothing about it. Even when they came to set the pick, Kawhi was fighting through it. Just that the nigga was hot. He was on fire. I'm giving LeBron super duper props. Clippers are supposed to be the best team in LA right now. He said, fuck that. And put the Lakers on his back. <laughs> I'm more mad at Anthony Davis that you still got LeBron doing this shit at this age and this level. This should have been an Anthony Davis moment and not the 2022nd LeBron James moment. <laughs> LeBron has a bunch of yeah. these moments. When is Anthony Davis going to get a moment like this? You got this grown-ass man, 39 years old, like Moses at 40, putting the whole fucking team on his back. Not only that, you know this is an important game because... It's, it's in, not even in city rivalry. It's in building rivalry. These niggas play in the same building. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You want to win, and, and not only that, them niggas, everybody talking about the Clippers, the Clippers, the Clippers, the Clippers. You want to put a stain in what they got going on right now, especially going into the playoffs. Big shout out to LeBron. I thought it was amazing. I watched this shit myself. I couldn't really believe it, especially him being doubled and triple teamed as soon as he come over. Of course, it, it reminded me almost of... Michael, a young Michael Jordan, a young Kobe Bryant. Like, you know, even when we was playing uh, amateur basketball or AAU basketball, when you're that good, as soon as you step over half, two people come in double come, team. Uh, yeah. As soon as you get over half, that's what the Clippers was doing after a certain point last night. So um, I thought it was amazing to watch. I've never seen a 39 year old do it. I seen Mike have spurts here and there when he was with the Wizards, but he wasn't. Uh, Chicago Bull Mike at all so and I'm still not saying I'm putting LeBron over Mike let's not be confused do you but, think people are uh, saying that do you think that's why people are saying that he may be on on something who's the people you had two names Mason <laughs> I mean, it's it's, it's it's not it's not. I can't give up all my sources, but it's not just you, two you people. Say that it's you very come, you credible come, you, people. You come out on this show every day and can't give up nobody, but people come to you to get information. Why talk about it <laughs> if you can't give up? This is what you do for because a living. Because they don't want to be out there about what they said, you know. Then I can't go for it if you okay. can't put a name behind what you're talking about. I can't. I said go up Kevin there. Garnett. Yeah, you said Kevin Garnett and Whitlock. Yeah. Now, as much as I no, love No, Kevin him, Garnett. Car Kevin Garnett no, was the no, one who said it. You didn't say Kevin Garnett till I accused you of getting your information from Jason Whitlock. <laughs> and then you brought up Kevin Garnett. Much as I love Kevin Garnett, that's that's my bro. Like that's for years, going on 25, 30 years. You gotta realize Paul Pierce and KG played against LeBron for yeah. a long time. For years. Yeah, so they yeah. really are haters of them. <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm saying if a person say they put three million dollars into their body, that is a that it that does raise a question of what is the three million dollars on or two million dollars on. Nobody ever said he puts three million dollars into his body. You just said that. They say he spends three million dollars on his body. That could be workout, that could be trainers, that could be vitamins, that could be a bunch of different things. You just reverse the words and say <laughs> no, he puts it okay. into his body. <laughs> he, put, he, put, he puts three million. What, how you said it again? Three million. He, spend, he spends three million. He spends three million dollars on his body. Yep. How much money are you gonna spend on? You? Come on, killer! I know you're not going with that. No, listen. When I'm I know you're not going with that, killer. You, three million. First of all, you jumped your the body. Price. It was two million dollars. It wasn't three million. You just raised a man. I let you slide with it, so it was cool. <laughs> Secondly. When you're LeBron James, you get overcharged for everything. Niggas try to overcharge me for if I come in and I want to pay Air Ones, it's two hundred dollars for me. It's one hundred ten dollars for everybody else. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna sit here and say you're good. I'm just, this is word the blood. I'm, just, I'm not, not the Air Ones. Not the Air Ones. I'll give you another a scenario. I, I'm not gonna say where we was working. I'm talking about as far as this mm -hmm. is concerned. It is yeah. what it is. When when I was looking for places for us to film. Somebody gave me a price. I'm not going to say the real prices. Somebody gave me a price and said, look, you can use this studio for $1,000 an hour. Yeah. But if you get 10 hours, it's $7,500 for the 10 hours. <laughs> that so, don't make sense. No, that make, he's giving you a discount. Yeah. He said, so it's $1,000, just so everybody on math and everybody's keeping up. $1,000 an hour if you want to use one hour, but if you buy in 10 hours, he'll give it to you for 7,500, which means he's giving it to you $250 less every day or every time you use the studio. So I said, that's a good deal. I want to buy 100 hours. 
He said, I bet that'll be a hundred thousand dollars. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, he's charging you more. I, I get where you're going with where, this, where killer. Going? Yeah, it doesn't like, make no I sense. I see where you're going. Yo, why would I, I buy see where more going. hours, <laughs> buy more hours to spend more money? So wouldn't it be, even if you gave me the same rate for the 10 hours, wouldn't it be $75,000 and not $100,000? Well, I'm just saying it's, it's going to be hundred. So what I would do is I would just buy 10 hours every time <laughs> To spend cheap seventy five hundred dollars, <laughs> as opposed to just spending a hundred thousand, and end up saving twenty five grand. I right. get what you're saying. Right. So when you're a celebrity, charge, people they, charge you more. And sometimes they charge you more. Sometimes you get for free. <laughs> yeah. It depends. It's like in between. It depends on if yeah. they're on the startup. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's a good point. If you're on the startup, like, like for another example, I'll give you another example. I buy a custom sneaker sometime. I pay the full price. Six hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, whatever. After I pay it, the dude asks me, "Yo, post it on your page for me?" No, you didn't give me no discount. If you, I can see if you say, "Yo, t- the sneakers five hundred killer, give me two hundred in a post." All right, cool. You charge me the full amount and then want me to promote your business. It don't work like that. Now, if you're gonna look out and give me a discount, I'll post and I'll support and I'll have people check you out. But if you're gonna charge me the whole thing, no, I'm not posting you. Okay, moving along. The LA Clippers are rebranding with a new logo and jersey. So one, what did you guys think when you saw the new logo? And then what do you guys think the Clippers are trying to accomplish? Maurice first. Yeah, I, I personally like the new logo. Um, I've, I've seen other logo for so many years. I just haven't liked uh, their brand, but I like everything they're doing. They're moving into a new stadium. And uh, the dude is, uh, what is the owner name? Steve Ballmer. What I think he's ultimately doing is that he's watching LeBron phase out. And then you have James Harden, uh, Paul George, and um, Russell Westbrook. And I just seen Russell Westbrook just bought uh, 180 um, uh, units back in his neighborhood or back in uh, South Central L.A. He, uh, helping to rebuild the community. I think that they're, since they're all in their young 30s, I really believe that they're, make, they're looking to make that the L.A. super team. Because you don't see another mega star coming up behind LeBron who's going to come to that market behind Kobe Brown, behind LeBron James, and dominate L.A. And I think that they know LeBron's going to be out in the next couple of years. Um, they're, they said over the last, I don't know how many years, the fa- over the last seven years, the fan base has doubled. And so I think once they get inside that new, that new arena and you start campaigning with the new brand, uh, I kind of like what they're doing. I think that they want to make it uh, L.A., like an L.A. homegrown championship with the dudes from L.A. before those dudes, um, you know, before they reach 40 and get out of here. Yeah, Eva, I'm having a bad um, sports day, but I really don't like this logo. <laughs> this logo is is nothing cool about it to me. And, and maybe you could spend a lot of money on it and then become cool. But I think the, the logo itself, I mean, being an ex-graphic artist, designer, this is is just not um really cool to me. What is this supposed to be? A ship with a snake around it? What is, what is this logo? What do you see, Mo? Is it a ship like a big ship? Well, I don't, I don't have it in front of me right now. But when I looked at it earlier, I thought it was cool. The the, the old <laughs> logo was just like it was plain and basic. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And um, I, I just see like if you look at the if you go to I don't know what it is if you look up, if you just Google L A Clippers. Uh, rebrand. It shows the court. It shows what the center court is going to look like and everything that they got going on in, uh, the into a stadium. And when I seen that, I was like, oh, you can run with this. You can, it, it'll look different and fresh and, and cool. But, but I think if it's marketed enough, I think you'll have a good product. Yeah. I, th- I, I think people receive it well. And when it comes to LA, there's no way in the world that they're going to let the Clippers be a better franchise than the Lakers. If they have to get Ja Morant, they will. If they have to um, bring somebody in, trade a bunch of assets, L.A. has always had the best player for a very, very long time. And I don't, I, m- to my vantage point, I don't see that changing. I think when it's all said and done, Rob Palenka and the rest of the crew even when LeBron fades out, they will have another superstar they had before LeBron. It was Kobe before Kobe. I mean, it was it was whoever was there, but they always had a superstar there. Um, 
I'm looking. At, I'm not mad at the logo. It reminds me. Give me Nordica vibes, actually. Yeah. I'm looking at it, kind of Nordica-ish. Um, we'll see what happens. It looked like something I would wear on like a polo shirt. I'm looking at it now. Um, far as the Clippers are concerned, look, I think Doc Rivers was saying this when he was coaching there. They got days like we got to get out this building. We got to get out this building. He's like, we need our own identity because even though you change the floor when the Clippers play, the banners, the banners are still yep. The banners are still in the Raptors. So you go in there, and you see Clippers on the floor and Clipper T-shirts and so on and so forth. But when you look at the Raptors, Raptors, pardon me, it says nothing Clippers. It's zero Clippers. Anything up in them banners. Maybe a division title in 1962 or some crazy shit like that. Everything is Laker related. So um, I dig it. I dig it. Um, Steve Ballmer, since he's been there, he's been busting moves, very exciting, very energetic owner. Uh, I believe that he makes so much money doing what he does outside of um, owning the Clippers that when he comes to the Clippers, it's just a fun time. Of course, he wants to win. But he's a billion. He's a, he's not just he's not one of them niggas who just got a billion. He got a few billion. So this is kind of his playground, kind of way to have fun. <laughs> trying no way for him to show that he's invested into the Clippers full time. And you got to realize he came right off the back of Donald Sterling's firing. So ever since then, I think he's been doing the best he can do. As far as the Clippers and LA situation. Um, I'm out the mind state of where Mace is at right this second, but I don't think that it's impossible for things to change. You know, as far mm-hmm. as the Clippers, the Lakers are concerned, they was their story franchise, same way the Yankees are, the same way uh, the Dallas Cowboys are. Um, but as you can see, the Yankees haven't won in a long time, and neither have the Dallas Cowboys, and we may be old enough to see that, yo, Lakers got to stay good. But young niggas, might, younger niggas than us might be like, man, fuck them niggas, man. I'm tired of everybody going to Lakers. Let's, uh, let's see what we could do like OKC right now or Minnesota right now. If those teams end up winning or getting close to a championship, the superstars that we're talking about aren't going to want to go to the Lakers because they're going to be like, I want a championship here. Unless you could start getting like Giannis. You know, Giannis start throwing threats out everywhere. Giannis sit there and be like, niggas don't get this person. I just left LA. <laughs> Shit, the weather was nice out there. Shit was looking good. You can still get people because LA is always a city to bring people in. But I don't know where these young niggas' minds is at. See, LeBron knew what being a Laker meant and winning a yeah. championship with being a Laker. And that's one thing I give LeBron a lot of credit for. He doesn't run away from uh, the pressure. Pause. And when I say that is, you know, you got to realize he he came into the league um, the best high school player, you know, probably from since Kareem Abdul-Jabbar uh, with the most pressure on him. Uh, you got pressure to win in Cleveland. You don't win. You go to Miami, people are like, ah, oh, you went down there with Dwayne Wade. You go pressure going back to Cleveland. Cleveland hadn't won a championship since 1960, whatever. And I'm not even talking about Basketball, football, baseball, the city hasn't won the championship since the 60s or 50s, if I'm not mistaken, since Jim Brown or somebody was with the Browns. And then you know what it means to be a Laker. You got Kobe Bryant, like Mace just said. You got Shaquille O'Neal. You got Magic Johnson. Mm-hmm. You have those people, because if you don't get it done, you're not going to matter at being a Laker. A lot, a lot of people don't count the bubble. I do. Uh, he gets a championship, whether it's the bubble or not, and gets that monkey off his back. But um, I, I just want to say uh, I don't really know in the future who's going to be the best team. But if I had to guess now, I'm going to go with what May said, and Lakers will figure something out to get another superstar player unless these young niggas is like, I'm sick of that. And, you, and I'll give you a great example. Same thing. It didn't work out, but it was like KD, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie. They went against the grain to go to Brooklyn on purpose just not to go to the Knicks because everybody is so, oh, the Knicks, the Knicks, the Knicks. They looking at that man, James Dolan, Spike Lee, oh, that's old, that shit ain't cool. You know, KD did an interview one time. He's like, why didn't you go to the Knicks and, and you went to the Nets? He, he actually said, 
Because the Knicks ain't cool. They don't really look cool. <laughs> that was his answer on, on the radio. That's crazy. <laughs> That's what he said. So you don't know where players' mindsets at. Um, as far as the logo, I actually have to agree with Mace. I don't really like it. Um, I know that the Clippers are trying to find their own identity and it's supposed to be a Clipper ship with like a basketball as the base. But, like if you don't know anything about ships and boats, like I wouldn't know that was a Clipper ship to know that that's what that's supposed to symbolize. Um, but like I see what they're trying to do, but I'm just not a fan of it. But that kind of brings me to the next question. Do you guys actually have a favorite NBA logo? Is Let there a logo that you Real quick before we answer that. When was you a graphic designer? <laughs> I know you for mad years. I, yeah. I, 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 I ain't never seen you draw graffiti at night when it was popping. Who was your graphic designer? <laughs> <laughs> and Clark and I'm not missing yeah, oh, I knew, I knew, it. It was just convenient yeah. enough when I wasn't there Cam you wasn't there you wasn't there <laughs> uh, I, I you just, wasn't there I, I, no, I, I knew that I knew that's what it was going to be I knew I knew that's what it was going to be when I wasn't around yeah. I, I knew I just wanted to check if that's what it was <laughs> Okay. Well, sorry, what was <laughs> no, that was a great question because I was wondering it and everybody was probably thinking it, yeah. but you asked. So, um, no, the question was just like on the topics of logos, do you guys have a favorite team logo that you think yeah, is my, that one? I mean, my favorite, one, I got two favorite logos. One is the um, Chicago Bulls, that logo. And I actually like the Orlando Magic logo. Those are two of my favorite logos. In the NBA. Um, Far's favorite logos is in professional sports. I'm gonna go with the Raiders. I like, you know, I like that black and gray. I said, you know, for me, it represents something outside of sports too. You know, that's that late '80s, yeah. early '90s yeah. NWA shit. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? So yeah, I thought she was just saying NBA, but uh, oh yeah, if we talk about professional sports. Yeah, I'm going with definitely the Raiders. Raiders. I'm going with the Raiders, and then I was after the Raiders, professional or not professional. My second favorite logo for sports, and this isn't a professional team, but. I like the Gauchos logo. If you don't know about the New York City Gauchos, they got yeah. a spectacular logo. Yeah. And it's a bull and it's, the smoke is coming out the nose. Like, that's it. That's a dope ass logo. Whoever thought that logo 40, 30, 40 years ago, but that's still like one of my favorite logos. Yeah, for so real. So check it out if you don't know about the New York City Gauchos, but their logo is pretty tough. And then, Maurice, do you have a favorite logo? Yeah, I always like the uh, Miami Dolphins. And I don't, I don't know why, but every t- ever since I've been a kid, I just always liked the Dolphins. Um, I, I guess just because it made me, always made me think about Miami. And every time I think about Miami, I think it's like just a cool place to visit. I like the old Tampa Bay, too. They, I don't think it is no yeah. more. The, yeah. the pirate nigga and all that. I used to like that, too. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, like, something that you kind of all said, like, all those things have in common. Like, you think of that city or that location. I just feel like, with the Clippers' new logo. It doesn't give that, but maybe because it's new, it just hasn't really settled in yet. And then before we move on from the Clippers, we were talking about championships and then different players being on certain teams. What do you guys think a championship would do for the Clippers as a franchise? Maurice, I'm going to let you go first. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know if it will ever... Uh, after listening to Cam talk about how Brooklyn and um, the Knicks are sort of like the same thing just on the East Coast, uh, I don't know if it will overtake the Lakers um, like history, but I think like shepherding in like a new age of young guys, I think that it lifts them up for for a chance for people to build on. Like once you get into the new building, if you can win a championship now, younger people coming up will want to build on, you know, what's been set in place. That's what I think. Uh, I think also it will be a different story, you know, with those guys being from L.A. I can imagine that they'll try to win a championship with the nucleus of dudes who come from LA and maybe just like some other dudes who come from the West coast who want to go there and build upon that. I don't know. Uh, but what makes me think about this and uh, I, I, wanted, I didn't want to cut cam off earlier when he was talking about this, but 
I remember I thought that everybody would always love Nike basketball sneakers, like for their whole life. Like you'll wear Nikes and you'll go out there and hoop or play football or whatever, right? And I remember when my daughter was coming up playing uh, basketball and all these kids would wear Under Armors. I was like, man, who wears Under Armour sneakers? Or when, when Steph Curry came out, no offense to him, but like I just didn't like the sneaker. But when you go to like these younger kids, every kid in the gym wanted these fucking uh, sneakers because it was a young kid's thing. And I often like right. take that same logic and I use it towards um, like the Clippers winning the championship or somebody who I probably didn't think was cool in my generation, like something eventually switching and you're, you're, you're now taking like the helm and giving it to somebody else. And so that was kind of like the analogy. I don't know if it sounded as clean as it did in my mind uh, explaining it, but hopefully that makes sense. No, that was a really good that was a really good point and a really good take. Um, cause I'm thinking about it now. I remember those um under armors that you was talking about. Even um, I think the Jordan team Jordans became cool at us at a certain point, but it's still what I'm saying is it still came back to Nike. And when it was all said and done, we still back to Nike after all of the under armor, after all of the Adidas with Derrick Rose. And all, and Trey Young get his sneaker and Ant Man get his sneaker. It comes back to that swoosh. I, I'm that's how I see it. Maybe I'm a traditionalist. I would like to Google who made more in like the last couple of years because I remember that year Under Armour came out. Yeah, they was going they went crazy because Cam Newton was down with them too, and Cam yeah. was hot at the time. Cam's ended up switching to Nike though, but um. Yeah, I would like that. Not not arguing with Mace or you. I just, I, I really would like to know just for myself, like in the mm-hmm. last five years, what the number comparison is. And I know Nike should be ahead, but just how far behind is Under Armour? Because I remember uh, maybe five, six years ago, when they was doing all these Nike tournaments in New York. Under Armour was doing them the next week. And I'm like, damn, Under Armour got yeah. AAU tournament. They was traveling. They was doing, it was looking good. And they um, was doing dope um, games, like on a ship and yeah, all of that. Yeah, they yeah. was going crazy. Yeah, they went crazy. As far as uh, the Clippers, we, the original question, um, them winning the championship, um, is one championship's not going to do it. <laughs> you know, and you could win two in a row and they'd be like, and niggas will love the Clippers and everything else, but <laughs> it, it, it's not good. They niggas got 19 championships. You know what I'm saying? Like one or two championships is not going to do it. It'll do it for the people who's playing, who's coaching, who's living in this generation. But overall, to some 70-year-old man, is not going to cut it. It'll be the Mets. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say that's a great point because the Mets won two World Series of uh, and well, I, since I've been alive that I remember – and nobody cares. They they don't care. The Yankees are, are the standard. And I remember at that particular time, I think I was like 10, 11 years old, but Dwight Gooden and and uh and Dow Strawberry and them guys, and they yeah. won. And I don't even think I remember seeing the Yankees win a championship yet. Mets won before the Yankees won, mm-hmm. at least as far as I remember. But everybody was waiting for the Yankees to win. Then they caught a run with A Rod and, and Derek Jeter and everybody, and they end up winning. But one championship for the Clippers is not going to cut it to take over the city of LA. Yeah. We won't be here to see when the Clippers are a better team in LA as far as perception is concerned. We're going to go to break. And when we return, we will discuss some NFL tampering allegations. Don't go anywhere. Pink horsepower. She called this thing about toxic. And then, like, you come on breathing on me like that. I fucking breathe to live. And, like, you used to be dark skinned, and now you act like hella light skinned. Are you fucking blind? I'm dark skinned. What, what the fuck? And then, like, look at your beard. What the fuck is your wrong beard with my looks beard? stupid. What the fuck are you talking about? No, I don't even like it. The way you breathe in, all of that. Has this ever happened to you? Your girl seems to be mad, angry, upset. She's frustrated. It's only one way to handle that. Pink horsepower. No. Wait, your remember, breath. Remember. Wait, your breath is really refreshing. No, 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 no. I'm just trying to give you a massage. 
Plus, have I told you how good your beard looks lately? It looks so good. No! PHP. It works every time. Wait! Where are you going? Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog fantasy picks of the day. Tonight, the Mavs will play the Celtics. Underdog fantasy has Luka Doncic at 31 and a half points. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? 31 points? 31 and a half. Ooh. Higher. Okay. Higher. Okay. Jason Tatum is at six and a half first quarter points. Do you have him higher or lower, Cam? Lower. Lower. Okay, and Jalen Brown is at three and a half assists. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? Higher. Higher. Hey, download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks too. We are joined back with our analyst, Maurice Claret. So, Nicole Hardman admitted on a podcast that he was dissatisfied with the New York Jets last season and that he begged the Kansas City Chiefs to come get me. The Jets GM is obviously not happy about that. So, how do you guys feel about his comments on the podcast? Maurice first. Yeah, I'm with him. Uh, I like everything he said. He basically said, fuck <laughs> these losers. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> I want to be uh, with winners. And, <laughs> yeah. and if you listen to the show, that nigga was like, look, y'all niggas is losers. I'm telling y'all, y'all losers. Y'all practice like losers. Y'all prepare like losers. Y'all do all the little shit like losers. And I don't want to be here, but you can, um, <laughs> like, you can, you can bet more players need to take this stance. And, and I'm with him. Like, I just got to a point in life myself is how I start with it. And I said, fuck niggas who lose it. And, and, and you don't like it, but you see where he got now. You know, the motherfucker got three championships. And when he was at Georgia, he won a lot. And um, I'm with him. So I saluted. And, you know, I'm pretty sure Kansas City, they'll pay the fine if it happens because he was a contributor uh, in the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. He wouldn't be there if he didn't take that stance. He'd be right there talking no. about, you know, we waiting for um Aaron Rodgers to get back. So I'm I'm with that, you know, especially from Title Town. Now you're talking like you're from Title Town. Welcome home, Mo. <laughs> Welcome home. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Mo, tell that nigga you have. What year you won the championship, Mo? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm O2. talking about. The title town wasn't even invented in his brain yet. It's O2, nigga. That's the year I went platinum, too. Yeah. That's my first platinum album. It was a great year for us Ohio niggas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was a great year for us niggas, man. <laughs> Welcome home, Mo. <laughs> Tell that nigga welcome home. Tell him, yeah. welcome, welcome, welcome back, to our house. Mo. <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um, I'm just briefly skimming through this. Uh, sounds like to me. Uh, overall, I agree with both of y'all. If you want to say do what you could do to get out of a situation, you can't. Cool. Where this nigga fucked up at is talking about it. Mm-hmm. He should have just not said nothing. You go, you know, niggas. Look, let me give y'all niggas some advice. You professional athletes, because you see niggas wilding. Like us. Yeah, don't mean you <laughs> don't, go don't out. You can go out here and wild out, B. Because <laughs> you see niggas wilding. That does not mean it's applicable for everybody to wild out. <laughs> you can't yeah. wild out. First thing I read when I was reading, skimming through this, it says, uh, it says, Kansas City Chiefs are no doubt glad to have required McCall Hartman, who caught the game winning touchdown in the Super Bowl, whatever that is joining the team, but this offseason, he might be a headache for the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> thank His you. run is over that thank fast. Thank you for your services. <laughs> like, yo, my nigga. <laughs> it was a pleasure. <laughs> like, my nigga, you got to shut up. You can't just run your mouth about everything. And I get it. It's Venom. It's the frustration of probably being with the Jets. I didn't see the Pivot interview when they got into detail, but he probably was just sharing his story and, and 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 ran your mouth a little too, bit too much. And what happens is, when you go to the next franchise, what they're going to say in their brain is, if something don't go right with us, is he going to run his mouth about yeah. us? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't fuck bitches who run their mouth 
Cause I heard they ran their mouth. I'm like, yo, <laughs> <laughs> yo, it's a bunch of girls that I probably would like one day had, had, had took down. You know what I'm saying? But you talk shit about niggas to me. I could imagine what you're gonna go back and talk about me to another <laughs> nigga. <Yeah. laughs> I'm just not doing it, yo. So I'm not saying it's the same situation, but when it, it's even worse, actually, because you got your job stability is on the line. Yeah. You sit there and, and, and talk crazy about the next franchise. Kansas City already knew this. There was no reason to go on the podcast and exploit it to the world. And now it's two things. Your job security is in jeopardy. And now it may be an investigation on the Kansas City Chiefs for tampering because you went on a podcast and wowed out. Mm-hmm. You won the Super Bowl. You got a chance to go back and play with Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, Kelsey and the crew, and do it again. But now they can't trust you. You might be back with the Giants next season. I'm dead. The Jets. But I also want to add that um, now he's basically being accused of leaking game plans to not just the Chiefs, but the Eagles. So does this information change how you feel about the situation or you still feel like he did what he needed to do? Maurice. Oh, this thing a while. Oh. Yeah, that yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that might that might that might fit his uh his behavior profile though. You know what I mean? Like the uh, the, the the come and get me like sassy female type stuff. You know what I'm saying? They leak the game plans. That's like showing screenshots and shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. That's a, that, that's a little crazy right there. Do you guys have any thoughts he, about he that? He definitely got IG model vibes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something go wrong, he leaking it. Pause. That's, that's crazy. That's wow. <laughs> <laughs> Something go wrong, he leaking it. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I, I ain't know that last part till Stat just said that nigga gonna be in the CFL next year, nigga. Canadian Football League, he is not, nobody trusting you. You, you, you leaking game plans to other niggas? Yeah. This is almost on the, on the, on the cusp of fucking with betting too. Because now yeah. you letting yeah. niggas know what niggas going to do and the game plan and you fucking with niggas betting money. Yeah, you messing <laughs> niggas parlay up. Yeah, so this is, this is, this is a fact. Like, yo. <laughs> So you see Larry shaking his head. You bet. Fact, yeah, you're right, baby. <laughs> nigga messing niggas parlay up. Yeah, <laughs> it's a fact. You fucking with niggas bets. You fucking with other teams records. You fucking with playoff potential, division championships, conference championships. This, why? Who, what's wrong with you, my nigga? You, why do you ain't just win the Super Bowl and go practice for next season? Because you was on a one year deal. You might not get picked up by nobody. I see the C. FL in, in your future unless niggas sign you to put pause to a gag order when you sign to with your new team. If you say anything, you're getting cut and fine. Then as of right now, it's unclear if the Jets will pursue tampering charges against the Chiefs. So this is going to be a TBD type of situation. Okay. A lot of discussion right now is around Justin Fields and the trade rumors circulating. What do you guys think is next for the quarterback, Maurice? I'm hoping that he goes to Atlanta. Uh, that's where he's from. He started his, uh, he, he's from down Georgia. So I want to see him go down there and uh, play with the young dude, B. John Robinson. And I think like his skill set, being back at home, as dynamic as he is, I think he goes down there and becomes a star. I think that uh, he's wasted a lot of his career in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's not to say anything about him personally. But I think there's a lot of guys that who grew up in the South, played in the South, high school in the South. And he started at Georgia and eventually came to Ohio State, did well. But I think that his career, the weather and all the things that uh, suit him well and his style of play and what they have going on in Atlanta. I'm hoping he goes down there. I'm biased because he went to Ohio State. Uh, So I'm, I'm hoping they actually trade him down there and get him out of Chicago because Chicago doesn't seem to do well with putting the the, uh, the, 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 um, the 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 pieces around their star players uh, to basically, you know, uh, make it a, a franchise that competes at a high level. So I'm hoping he goes down to Georgia and uh, becomes a Falcon. Yeah, I think I, I agree with you. I think he's definitely going to end up in Atlanta because 
you know, they they have to get them out of there from Chicago to make sure that they make room for what I believe is going to be Caleb Williams. And also, another thing when it comes to Justin Fields, when you think of the coach, the new coach they got, Raheem, I think it's Raheem Morris. This week he was yeah. just last saying that if we had this quarterback, I wouldn't have this job. So he's really looking forward to coaching coaching that kind of quarterback, and that's what they need at that um, franchise. Well, I like what the general manager said. General manager said, we're going to make a decision quick. We don't want any gray area. Uh, they're cool with Justin. And they don't want him just guessing. So you know, they got a young GM up there in Chicago. I liked everything that he said. You know, uh, He didn't sugarcoat it. He didn't say, well, we're going to see. We're going to let them f- uh, compete to see who starts. So now nah, we're gonna let Justin know if we're gonna keep him or not. That's what he said in a nice way. So that for, that way, it's not lingering over his head as well. Um, yeah, Caleb looks like he's going to Chicago, and Justin Fields is out of there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll just see where he's headed. But I do like what the GM said. He at least he he was very clear and cut. And a lot of GMs aren't. They'll sit there and let you linger and don't know what your future is and don't know if you're going to be a backup if you're not coming in next year, so on and so forth. You know, a lot of shit we learned with Russell Wilson, he was getting it as we was getting it. Pause. Yeah. He was getting information as we was getting it, and, that, and that's fucked up. So I do like the Chicago um, Bears general manager, how he took his stance on how they're moving forward with uh, Justin Fields. And then, as we know, the Bears do have the number one pick in the NFL draft. And ongoing this weekend right now is the NFL Combine. It was actually reported that Caleb Williams is declining to partake in medical examinations with all 32 teams, which this is like one of the first time that's ever been heard of. One, do you guys think this hurts his draft stock? And then who do you guys think will be the number one pick? Do you guys still think it will be Caleb Williams? Oh, I don't actually. Um... I, I personally believe that the Bears should take Marvin Harrison Jr. And I don't say that just because I went to Ohio State. I just say it like uh, I remember early in the season. Do y'all remember when uh, Caleb Williams had lost? And instead of like, you know, going to the tunnel with his team, my man went over to his mother and cried. And I just know how that's viewed in locker rooms amongst people. Right. And then I start thinking about Michael Penix. I'm like, man, do you really want him? He been banged up with two ACLs, a little bit older. Ah, do I really want Bo Nix? Ah, I don't know if I don't know if that does it. But when I look at Marvin Harrison, like you know exactly, or Marvin Harrison Jr., you know exactly what you're gonna get. I can't say I feel the same way about Caleb Williams. And then I don't know who they played because y'all was teasing uh, OJ a week after. Uh, I think it was Notre Dame, and he was getting blitzed all crazy. And it was the first time I think people had seen him under up under a bunch of stress. And I don't know if I'm like too cynical, but like when I look at him, I'm like, man, and do you or do you go draft a kid, Jaden Daniels out of LSU? Like, I don't know if you I, I don't know. You know, I, I I don't know. But I know if I go gra- dra- draft Marvin Harrison, I can go take an average quarterback with an above average receiver and get the same production or get better production out of him. And I know what I have for sure than take my guess with a quarterback. So I think Marvin Harrison Jr. going to be going first. And to answer your question about um, uh, what it was, uh, uh, that hurting his stock, I don't think it hurts his stock. It's, it's basically He's basically doing the same thing he did in college. He's basically telling the system, I'm going to do what I want to do, and I'm going to move to, the, to, to my own beat of my own drum, and I don't want to participate in it because you all are going to take me anyway. And that's kind of like sassy. Like, you know, he paint his nails and shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like all like that sassy nigga shit. <laughs> I mean, since you put it that way, <laughs> I definitely can see the guy from um. <laughs> I definitely can see the quarterback from LSU going um, number one as well. But I also liked um the quarterback from um what was that North Carolina? What was his name? North Carolina. Yeah. But I don't think it, because I think the Bears got number one and, num- oh, Drake, and the number Drake nine May. pick. Drake May, yeah, that's his name. Yeah. LSU, Jaden Daniels, North Carolina, Drake May. Yeah, they. I mean, you you're right. They could take they could take Mar. Well, the way it's looking, they probably could get Mar. Um, the guy from Ohio State, Mar- and Mar- they can Julia. get 
Yeah, Morris Harrison Jr. And they can get the kid from UNC. They got the first and ninth pick. So you you're hundred percent right. Um I don't really know who should go first, to be honest with you. I ain't really put that much uh do that much homework on who should be going first. I know the Columbine Colin Columbine's going on right now. That's the Columbine. Combine, pardon me. <laughs> the you know, Columbine. School, schools and shit get shot. <laughs> pardon me. No disrespect to people out there. Combine. Yeah. Um, I haven't been keeping up, but just looking at clips and news and so on and so forth, it seems like just what it seems like so far, and not with with uh I know Mo Mo is uh Ohio State like I am. And uh, I don't want Marvin Harrison Jr. going to Chicago because I think he's a better player, and I think Chicago's a long way from being good. And I'd rather see him go into a better system so we don't do that to one of our own like that, just throw him in the fire <laughs> like that, man. Because <laughs> it doesn't, it hasn't been looking productive up there for years, man. So I know it's great to say you're the number one pick. Money is money related, also when you're negotiating your deal, so on and so forth, but. I don't want that man to go up there and not be productive because the the organization isn't right. Yeah, losing in the cold is a horrible situation. Right. So uh, we'll wait and see what happens. I'm still thinking uh, as far as just looking, Caleb is going first. And as far as him not doing the medical stuff that he was supposed to do for all the teams, he's no, he's not going to all the teams. <laughs> like So it says that, you know, I'm not saying niggas ain't sassy out here. I don't know him like that. I know he said he lost and went home and cried with his dog when when they lost <laughs> their game and shit. So I'm not going to take away what you said, Mo, but it's just one of them situations where, uh, look, what the fuck am I giving 32 teams a physical for when I'm going to one? Let's nail down yeah. my options. I, I might be going to this team, this team, this team. I'm not going to slip pause past seven or eight. And I don't know. I'm just guessing. He might, but I'm just saying in his brain, I'm going to give these eight teams the the physical that they need because at the end of the day, I'm not going to these other uh, 24 teams. Yeah. So I get that from him. And then, so add, oh, yeah, go, Maurice. No, to add on to what Cam said, just for people who don't know, even after the combine, every player gets invited by the teams that who have the potential to draft them. So he could go visit, you know, those top three teams, the Bears and whoever has the second and third pick. And once he gets to the uh, team facility, they'll ask him to do a physical there. So I didn't even think about it that way. He's like, basically, fuck it. I won't be here that long. But he will do a physical once he goes and visits those teams and uh, who have the potential to draft him. And then our last topic before we wrap. So Ryan Garcia is on ultimate troll vibes after arriving on a horse to the press conference and wearing a Diddy Haney shirt during a gym session. And then on Devin Haney's side, Ryan was accused of being intoxicated and coked out. A lot of fans were actually <laughs> concerned. because They were like, why are you sweating? Why does your voice like sound like that? And why do you look scared? In return, Garcia leaked a fight video between Devin Haney and Tank that also didn't look very good. So there's a lot going on in the internet right now between the two. What are you guys' thoughts on all of this? What did his happening? t-shirt say again? The t-shirt, it was um, Devin Haney and Diddy at a pool party. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and he wrote... No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, look, they, they got the whole internet talking. <laughs> Everybody talk about Tank and uh uh and, and Devin in the in the ring and you know Tank tighten him up, but hey, look they selling a the fight. You know, in in the age of social media, you can go pick up old footage, you can go pick up old pictures, and then it gets even worse now because people can Photoshop, people can edit videos, and just like anything else, I'm pretty sure either either Devin's team, uh, I'm pretty sure his father because his father is super active on social media. Or even through Ryan's team, they got a bunch of people sending them videos, and this is the stuff that they trolling with. But they selling the fight, and so I, I can't wait to see the fight. I want to see them rumble. I'm going for Devin. Uh, just put my putting it out there, and uh, they just selling the fight, so I like it. So, do you got Devin by knockout or decision? I, I got Devin by knockout. You know I, what I seen with Ryan Garcia, and this is just me just looking at what I seen what he do with Tank. 
it can't, it come, Ryan is real good at marketing. Ryan is real good at selling yourself. Ryan is real good hitting the mitts. And Ryan has been real good against who he's been good against, right? But I seen when he fought Tank, and Tank was skilled, and Tank started to tighten his ass up, pause, and Tank was about to knock him out. That motherfucker had that look in his eye like, fuck this, I'm going to just drop on my knee because I don't want to get embarrassed and get knocked out. I think Devin is a much more sound fighter uh, technically than Tank. You know what I'm saying? He's not looking for the one punch, the, the one hitter quarter. Tank, I mean, Devin, if you watch him, very skilled, very sound. I, I call him like a young Tim Duncan, just with his just soundness and, and just he's skilled. And I don't see, I see him frustrating Ryan because Ryan not getting no crazy open shots or potentially knocking him out. And I think that Devin has gotten his confidence back uh, ever since he fought uh, Loma. Uh, he came back and whooped on the last dude. I just think he got his confidence back, and I think that he'll knock Ryan out. And I think after like, and, and then once you start doing all this personal shit, like you just be like, you know what, motherfucker, I'm gonna I'm gonna do what Tank didn't do, so they can separate me from Tank. I'm gonna knock your ass out. Yeah, because I I think he'll he'll try to fight even the more with Devin, but you know I'm I'm in agreement with you. I'm Team Haney definitely. I think Devin Haney get him out of there. No later than probably like the seventh, eighth round. But it should be a really good good fight. I like the press conference because Ryan is really letting it all, you know, letting it show. But, you know, he's selling the fight, but he ain't coming to fight. I don't think so. Well, I'll wait till Monday. Bill Haney supposed to come in Monday, May says. So I'll wait for all my questions and topics and everything about this tape that I've seen with him and Tank. Because I'm pretty sure he'll have an answer for it. So I'm going to save all my uh, Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney questions and opinions for when he gets up here. That's that. Thanks, Mar Maurice, for being here. Thanks, Mo. Appreciate you, See bro. See y'all. You're all ready. Okay. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, it is what it is. Uh, Super big next. Like when they doing them two for five.